Before we get into the drama, let's understand what I've done and what our collective has done for the Web 3 X film X TV production economy here. All right, the problem that we have to address is that the pool of labor is defined as one property. That is fundamentally enslavement. So that means that when we put together a production for a film or a season of television, who owns that film? Who owns that season of television? There's a few different layers of intellectual property there. You have the franchise and you have the distributed asset. Who owns that distributed asset? How is it defined as property? The solution to our what ails us in labor is in the definition of that specific property. So I brought a paradigm shift into the economy where we define that property fundamentally as a puzzle with a hard cap of pieces instead of one unit. This problem is over a hundred years old. My great granduncle Robert Earl Jones was a pioneer in the second wave of Hollywood. He was also blacklisted 10 years before they started blacklisting communists. They started blacklisting black people for, for making race films way before they started blacklisting communists. So he had to actually transition to Broadway for 15 years just to keep afloat. But anyway, back in the 20s when the studio system first started, the pool of labor that produced a film is defined as one property. And that's the adjustment that we have to make. We, cannot, we can no longer define that pool of labor that produces the film or produces the season of television as one property. We have to fundamentally define it using a deed as a puzzle with a hard cap of pieces. There's a consumer product and a proof of labor system that issues residuals to each and every laborer in that film or in that season of television. What are we all, all out in the streets for, huh? So in order to define a pool of labor as a puzzle with a hard cap of pieces, I wrote a paper called The Elmo Structure for Tokenomics all the way back in February 2021, went through a vetting process with counsel. We published it on technically March 22nd, but I claim March 24th because it's the first data point that we created on the blockchain to represent our brand puzzle, which we also took as one, from one unit of property and separated into 500,000 individual pieces of which 84% of those pieces are the proof of labor system for myself and my brand partners. The, the co-founders, our board of advisors, our creative board, they all are accounted for with ownership over the brand. And 16% is the consumer product. So uh, we do the same thing in season one of Press Pass. That's a hard-capped puzzle of 5,309,160 pieces representing the scale of season one. 10% is a consumer product, 90% is proof of labor. Now in that paper, I established six different use cases for blockchain technology to produce and monetize these puzzles. And I made each of those use cases open source, requiring attribution to the paper itself so other people that come along that want to build these products know where they get the information. I made them open source because I knew if I didn't, and if I tried to do some licensing bullshit, or if I didn't just provide them as open source, some corporation would have come along and enslaved everybody's use of this paradigm. So I made it free, free tools free cognitive tooling for translating labor into property in a universal way in a film, a show, or a studio brand. So before we get into the drama of what's happened after I publish this, let's discuss what the use cases are. All six of the use cases established by my paper in March of 2021 are open source. And I pulled this out of the abstract depth of thought. I've synthesized 85 years of family experience, 17 years of my own experience, and seven years of cognitive linguistic research. So Use case number one is the specific use case of using non-fungible tokens, aka digital collectibles, as open market passes to an exclusive collaboration in storytelling, and that's open source. In order to provide value assurance to your audience, it's important to enable a translation of their collaboration into their property using a scalable intellectual property puzzle, trademark, construct to define the storytelling experience and potential result as the puzzle is the, is the creator labor translated into a hard-capped pool of equal pieces. Using a scalable intellectual property puzzle construct to define the storytelling experience and the potential result as a puzzle is the creator labor translated into a hard-capped pool of equal pieces. Now the Web3 film community has branded this use case as membership passes or access passes to a digital collectible experience. That was a form of counter-marketing my published resource, and this uh, micro-documentary will explain that. 
So Lightmail Productions is the first studio in the history of global show business to utilize this use case for a production platform in our company ownership token collection, demonstrating proof of origin for the idea both in the paper and on the Ethereum blockchain on March 24th at 9.09 p.m. Press Pass Season 1 is the first production in the history of global show business to pursue a fully financed production using collaborative access passes, pieces to a collaborative puzzle, on the blockchain, demonstrating proof of origin for the idea on May 18th, 2021. I personally designed this construct for Press Pass, and the show is the first production in history to utilize this use case in our intellectual property token collection for Season 1. In our specific constructs, the membership passes are also collaborative pieces of a puzzle. This fundamentally creates value assurance for consumers through a hard math portion of equity in the collaborative property. The property would otherwise be fully owned by an individual or a business. Now, the reason why we were counter-marketed and people decided to call them membership passes was one, for the authority of doing so, for the platform of taking authority over my labor. That was the number one benefit of doing so. And two, these people decided that they were police and that ownership wasn't something that you could sell to consumers. So they said membership, membership, membership. They've been trying to scrub me out ever since. So the first use case is more of a paradigm shift, cognitive linguistic paradigm shift. Instead of defining the pool of labor as one property owned by one entity, it's fundamentally defined as a puzzle owned by all collaborators, whether they be from the audience side or hired collaborators. That is the first use case. The second use case is the specific strategy of forming a value-assured community agreement to fractionalize that ownership or other rights to a shared endeavor or asset and assign those parts to token IDs of certified collectibles on the blockchain, and that's open source. So you write a deed that declares the asset as a puzzle, and then you assign equal portions of ownership to the token IDs that you create for the puzzle pieces. Pretty cool, huh? We branded this use case as the Scalable Intellectual Property Puzzle. Additional terms include the Scalable Storytelling Puzzle, the Distributed Equity Ecosystem, and or a Blockchain Equisystem, all of which are trademarks for our collective's use. The second use case of forming a deed that declares that asset as a puzzle and assigning parts of the puzzle to token IDs on the blockchain, that's open source. Our specific mark of trade of Scalable Intellectual Property Puzzle is limited to members of our collective the part owners of the Let Me Out Productions brand. Those are the only folks that are able to use that trademark. Otherwise, I, I would have made that open source, but as you can see by the behavior that I'm about to expose to you in this micro documentary, that that was untenable. We have to protect our intellectual property. So this is one way we can protect our intellectual property. The third use case is the specific strategy of distributing these puzzle pieces, also known as certified labor collectibles, to hired collaborators to anchor their equity for net earnings issuance, and that's open source. We've branded this use case as equity-backed labor with commission and or simply a proof of labor system. The second use case is required as a foundation to employ the third use case. You have to have a deed to the property that declares it as a puzzle and assigns ownership to the various token IDs that you create. It's important to highlight that the blockchain is able to enforce labor commissions exclusive to the exact laborer's impact. If the laborer sells their collectible to a consumer, their co labor commission would be issued to a community treasury instead of the individual who purchased that certified labor piece. So I bring this up because uh, it's very important that collaborative property does not equal investment contracts. There's a clear separation, a clear separation in market definition between collaborative property and investment contracts. That's what this paper is supposed to help people figure out. The fourth use case is the specific use case of using non-fungible tokens as collectible gateways for content distribution and rights enforcement, and that's open source. We've branded this as the distribution gateway model, collectible distribution rights, and distribution rights tokens. When you self-produce or when you self-finance a film or a season of television by selling collaborative property, you haven't sold your intellectual property to a distributor. At the franchise level, you, the creator, own 100%. At the distributed asset level, you've negotiated with a production house, you'll keep some of the puzzle pieces, your labor will keep 20%, 20%, okay? And then 10% will be sold as a consumer product. These are more or less collaborative toys. They're toys that you play with, and when you play with the toy, it'll create something in the ecosystem. So, if you self-produce and you self-finance that production, you have to, you have to get it distributed. Sell distribution rights. The fifth use case is the specific use case of forming and or hiring a sub-DAO. A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization to run a department of the platform to facilitate a collaborative community wealth system and a guarantee 
the consumer property that you're selling, an audience experience guarantor. We branded this as an experience maximization system or an XMAX. Now, the reason that you have to have an audience experience guarantor is if your brand somehow fails, the property that you've sold to consumers must be self-sustainable. That's what makes it property. Okay, you buy a Pokemon card, Pokemon could fail, Nintendo could fail, Game Freak, whoever, they could fail. That card is still yours. It's still it's a self-sustainable property. So, in, in the realm of digital uh, intellectual property, it needs to work the same way. I'm not saying that. Judge Marrero said that about Top Shots. The sixth use case established by this paper is the specific use case of measuring the amount of token additions or the amount of tokens in a collection held by an individual to gauge their commitment to the community property in a fixed tier system, expanding rights and access at each tier. That's open source. We've branded this as the Collection Benchmark Achievement System, and this is one of the ones that's most ripped off without attribution. If, if you got that from this paper specifically, you have to attribute the paper. If you, if you came up with that on your own, great. Okay. That's the, it, it's open source. <laughs> it's protected. All of your work on any of these use cases is protected by this paper. It's a fundamental service that we've provided to this entire economy. So let's go over the attribution and then we'll get into uh, all of the drama. Now the entire strategy, which is officially titled as the scalable intellectual property puzzles on the almost structure for tokenomics, that's open source. With all of the appropriate copyrights, patents, trademarks, like scalable intellectual property puzzle, and licenses immutably retained by myself or let me have productions with blockchain provenance. I actively want other platforms implementing specifically the sixth use case, the collection benchmark achievement systems for their brand ownership and intellectual property ownership. A community of early adopters of this technology and this information have called this product a studio pass, an access pass, or a membership pass. I'm about to explain how that was born from a counter marketing. But uh, a word of caution regarding membership versus ownership. Consumers want ownership. They don't want membership. Also, there's a reason you can't sell your uh, gold's gym pass to somebody else okay but there while you can sell a, a baseball card or a pokemon card to somebody else if you're creative out there and you're use this paper to build products you are required to provide the exact following credit this project employs information from the almost structure for tokenomics an open source arrangement of fundamental use cases for producing collaborative storytelling experiences with blockchain technology that's it this project employs information from the Elmo Structure for Tokenomics, an open source arrangement of fundamental use cases for producing collaborative storytelling experiences with blockchain technology. That basic dignity has been removed from us completely by plagiarism, conspiracy to limit competition, horizontal collusion, and can ultimately consumer fraud. And this micro documentary will explain every step of that. So strap in, get ready for a ride. This is a lens phase documentary. I founded the NFT Film Squad in February 2021, and we started talking about, you know, Web3 and film. Um, like, we ran on clubhouse rooms once a week, and we were 24-7. I was, you know, looking for filmmakers. And, you know, cut to really 18 months later, um, I've been doing that for 24-7. We run four uh, uh, spaces a week on... Um, on Web3 and film, on film NFTs, on Film3. Uh, we, I've spoken in, at Cannes Film Festival, at NFT NYC, um, and a whole bunch of different places on, uh, on, on this subject. And so begins the fundamental lie. This person did not start NFT Film Squad in February 2021. They joined Clubhouse in February 2021. They hosted a room about the European film market in February 2021. The next day, they attended a Beeple Gary V room where presumably they discussed uh, points distribution on the blockchain. In March of 2021, this individual focused their clubhouse presence on onboarding women in Web3. In April of 2021, that room title changed to Filmmakers in Web3. And in late May of 2021, I joined Filmmakers in Web3 on Clubhouse. Did not think it was a centralized space with any you know, fulcrum of, of, uh, of personality to it. And I shared my ideas and my products and my model for a collaborative storytelling brand and the collaborative storytelling product. I was immediately scrubbed out. We, you know, the squad is now, you know, I'm 
pretty much the instigator behind the the film three movement and the chief architect behind that and and uh, you know the squad's the foundation of film three. In late May 2021, I attend the filmmakers in Web three room for the first time. Android had just released their Clubhouse uh, app, so I finally had access to Clubhouse. I joined the room. I give my pitch. It's about a ten minute presentation. At the time, we did not have efficient language for the collaborative storytelling brand or the collaborative storytelling product. We did have the idea, the paper, the model, and the products ready to go. And right after that presentation, after 10 minutes of effort, that specific and exact individual calling themselves the architect decided to kneecap that. They said, hey, everybody, it's important to remember nobody knows anything. That immediately took authority over my labor and diminished its value to nothing. So they did that two or three more times, and the two or three more times I attended that room, and I stopped going. We have a rule in our family. We do not participate in our own marginalization. Uh, after 18 months, we're dropping our squad member pass tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and in October, we are really trying to make a seminal moment with the Film 3 Summit. And I founded the NFT Film Squad in February 2021. Following my brief presence in the Filmmakers X Web 3 room on Clubhouse, where I did meet some fantastic people, David Bianchi, Ian Grant, Natalie Crew, Lauren Walsh, Jeff from Z Creative Media, Jason Charnick. I met some wonderful people in that space. But every time I'd give a presentation on the collaborative storytelling brand of Let Me Out Productions and the collaborative storytelling product of the scalable intellectual property puzzle, mind you, I didn't have that language as efficient back then, but this person who now calls themselves the architect of my labor and so many others would kneecap that information. It's important to remember nobody knows anything. Every time I gave a presentation, I said, okay, I'm not going to go there anymore. It's called kneecapping. You're taking the meaning that somebody else is intending to deliver, and you're diminishing the value of that meaning. You're cutting them off at the knees. No one knows what the fuck they're doing here. So everyone is very generous with their time in that way. Uh, pretty much the instigator behind the, the, the film tree the, the the movement. Film film movement. Behind After I exited that space, this specific and exact individual who calls themselves the architect held an unauthorized illegal trial against my paper, the products, and the model. They insinuated to the public that we were offering unregistered securities. They insinuated to the public that our model was amateur because we minted on OpenSea. We created data points on a public notary service using a marketplace contract. So we were amateur. And they lied to consumers by saying we didn't have a layer two enforcement system for our products. The, the shorthand version of that is they didn't write their own smart contract. So they made up rules against our model and against our existing products. This is called conspiracy to limit competition. It is illegal. You can't do this. They're not authorized to hold a trial over somebody else's labor. The result of this unauthorized trial held week after week after week in late May, throughout June, and throughout July of 2021 was that early adopters flocked to this individual who calls themselves the architect. And they said, hey, they sound like they know what they're talking about. They sound like they have all the answers. Meanwhile, they are just holding my labor on trial. They're going through my paper, they're going through the Let Me Out products, and they're picking things that they decide are vulnerable to get us out of the way, to get us out of what they figured was their first mover position, the first mover position that they felt entitled to because they joined Clubhouse in February of 2021. Now myself, I started my work in this sector in December of 2020. I came into blockchain because my brother was missing at the time, he's since passed, and because I was being shut out of my other entertainment product, National Basketball Association. I pivoted away from the filmmakers in Web3 Clubhouse room because of the behavior on display. I wasn't going to participate in that. And luckily for me, there's a group called the NFTS.tips community that was more or less discussing and, and, and launching products along the same line. So I was able to bring our collaborative storytelling brand of Let Me Out Productions to the NFTS.tips community. I was able to bring our collaborative storytelling products of the Crypto Bears musical and Press Pass to the NFTS.tips community. And we were welcomed. We were allowed to present without being kneecapped, felt at home. Uh, we also started our own clubhouse room in June, and we, we started pulling in numbers, baby. I think our biggest room was like 600 people. Now, that's where that infiltrator fraud, Jacob Volsky, comes in. 
the biggest mistake I've made in Web3 so far, and I've made a few of them, but the biggest mistake, and most of them are along the lines of personnel, the biggest mistake I've made was involving that fraud in our platform. My journey, just to introduce myself, um, uh, forgive me if I'm a little nervous, we literally just started minting our Genesis uh, NFT project right now. Um, since I've been on this uh, Twitter space, we started about eight minutes ago and uh, I'm refreshing on OpenSea, uh, about 627 minted uh, in these eight minutes uh, since we've started. He says he's nervous because of the mint out, but he's actively washing his product and he sees me in the room. That's why he's nervous. Kind of a rush, uh, kind of really excited to see it go. Kind, kind of a rush, really excited uh, kind of really excited to see it go. Really go. go. But uh, um, to give you a little bit of a background, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Zero X Thulu. And uh, we are a, a community built, a community led uh, project that uh, uh, kind of came up and was born out of Web3. You know, that was one thing that kind of, I, I wanted to go into that a little bit because it really helped inform what we built with Zero X Dulu quite a bit. Um, you know, fast forward from there, uh, I left touring. I, I worked for Apple as a video editor for some time uh, in San Francisco. And then I moved to Los Angeles because uh, independent film work started pulling me there. Um, so I was... Uh, um, working originally in production audio, audio post, and as a video editor, but uh, eventually worked up to writing, produ producing, directing. Um, my uh, last uh, job, I guess, that before I left for Web3, um, I was the lead producer and showrunner for a, a leading VR uh, production company. Um, and we were doing most of, mostly social impact documentary uh, outreach. We had been working with, uh, uh, say, USC as an example. Everything that man just said about his career is either bullshit or he bullshitted me in our first conversation on May 4th of 2021. May 4th of 2021. When I asked him if he had ever directed television and he said he'd only produced a few music videos. So either everything he said was BS or he BSed me in that moment. Either way, we believe in uplifting opportunity here at Let Me Out Productions, so I get excited when I see somebody who has a little bit of industry experience that's ready to take their next step. And that was my mistake. I thought this man was one of those people. So we brought him in to line produce and be a director of an episode on season one of Press Pass. Huge mistake. He signs a non-disclosure agreement on May 8th. Now my brother, Giovanni, he died on April 10th and we found out as a family on May 12th. He died in a tent in Berkeley, homeless, not telling anybody he was down bad. So on May 12th, I tell Jacob about our family loss. This is going to sound hilarious, but uh, um, so I, I minted a fluff from the Fluff World uh, uh, project, um, and I started a cult of bunny rabbits. Um, but basically, uh, I had uh, a couple of them that I minted, and one of them was uh, like my least rare. And I thought to myself that everyone has these 3D models. Everyone has an NFT that they have rights to, um, but not everyone can be creative onboarded, and, and people don't have the resources and the funds and the, the mentorship and the, the, accept, the access to these people. Or even a lot of times, too, as most of us filmmakers know, they just don't know how to access it. Most people, most talents, most skills are, are really accessible, but if you don't know how to do it, then uh, it's it's good to provide some guidance. But, uh, um, you know, so I, uh, I left that job um, and started building Zero X Thulu, and uh, it is a, a grassroots community project. Um, at some point, this is my belief, at some point, Jacob and that self-titled architect linked up. I believe it was early June. They had a conversation and they came up with a plan. Jacob was to sabotage us from the inside while the self-titled architect would destroy us with public messaging. The whole goal was to kill us off our first mover position. The self-titled architect would kneecap us by claiming that we're amateur, that we're selling unregistered securities, and then Jacob Volsky, the fraud, would do the same thing. Now, he did it in a clever way where he would act like he was vetting the model against being considered unregistered securities, and he'd bring in lawyers to our sales calls to distract the message of the sales calls and focus on security law. I only noticed this op on our actual drop room on July 3rd. And here he is lying to consumers about his entry to Web3. You know, so I, uh, I left that job um, and started building Zero X Thulu, and uh, it is a, a grassroots community project. Um, we, you know, the squad is now, you know, I'm 
pretty much the instigator behind the the film three movement and the chief architect behind that and and uh, you know the squad's the foundation of film three. Their goal to kill us off our first mover position was to humanity be damned. My person be I was a stranger to them. My person be damned. My story be damned. I was born on crack in 1989. I got put in foster care at six months old, and I got kicked out the day I turned 18. I survive a disability that most of y'all wouldn't be able to live through for a day, okay? You wouldn't be able to live through that for a day. And these people are out here stealing my labor, stealing authority over my, they're strangers to me, creating violence on the market so they can get a win when my paper was open source to begin with. All they had to do was use it to launch their products. Well, at least the self-titled architect, Jacob signed a non-disclosure, non-compete for seven years. He was not to do anything that he did. So I, uh, I left that job um, and started building Zero X Thulu, and uh, it is a, a grassroots community project. I'm all caps bear. I'm all cap. I've been there, done that. You see my fire hat? I stole it from a cat. People started following. Uh, we started building um, about 12 months ago. In, in in five days, it'll be a full year. Um, we got people together from the community. So um, along with that, uh, there are um, like our animators for our project are from the community. Our logo was made by members of our community and, and staffed everyone from the community. Um, I was a holder with that film background and, and used that to essentially uh, like, you know, build this community collective project. So, so you have the self-titled architect holding our products, our paper, our model on trial with the little clubhouse room that they have, which again was not a collaborative storytelling brand. It was a conference call on Clubhouse. And this infiltrator fraud, Jacob Volksky, sabotaging our messaging in four different sales calls, including our primary drop for press pass, by inviting lawyer friends in and continuously focusing the conversation on whether or not these are unregistered securities. Now, mind you, I had already done this vetting process for two months in February and March of 2021 with my own counsel. We're good. But I was happy, my idiot ass, my brother just died, I'm grieving, I'm not thinking that this person is moving with sharp teeth. Okay, so I'm thinking, okay, we should vet this for the communities to, to clear up any questions. Nah, his goal and their, their, their combined goal was to make me seem like I was non-compliant. Like the black man was illegal and unauthorized. My uh, last uh, job, I guess, that before I left for Web3, um, I was the lead producer and showrunner for a, a leading VR uh, production company. So um, I, uh, I left that job um, and started building Zero X Thulu, and uh, it is a, a grassroots community project. Um, so there he is, claiming that he left his showrunner job to start building Zero X Thulu. Now, I don't know. He's either lying to y'all or he lied to me. I hope for his sake that he lied to me and not to y'all. Because if he's saying that he was a showrunner, he wasn't no showrunner. All right? But he lied to y'all anyway because he said he left the showrunner position and started building Zero X Tulu. No, man, you got a healthy bath in everything that you started within our brand after you signed a non-disclosure, non-compete for seven years. And to stop me from talking about it, this man had the audacity to send me a cease and desist a week after they minted. A cease and desist. I didn't sign any paperwork with him. He signed a non-disclosure with us. And he sends me a cease and desist to, to get me to not talk about his NDA. This man is a fraud. He is pulling it over your eyes. Um, we have not accepted any VC funding, and we've built all the way to this point, um, which is pretty incredible. Now I'm looking, I just refreshed, and we're at one... We're at like the 1200 minted in this time. I'm like, oh my God, we did it. Oh, this clever man. See, he says he didn't accept VC funds, specifically VC funds. The man definitely got investment. He definitely put his face on our model, our products, our ideas, wrapped them in some other sort of lore crafting thing, and went and got investment for putting his face on my labor. Okay, but then he's lying to consumer. He says, oh, we didn't get any funding from VCs. You got funding from somewhere, maybe not VCs, but you got funding. Um, 
Zero X Thulu and, and, and what kind of brought me here and into this, um, it's a decentralized production house um, and art collective. Um, we essentially built um, like a lot of strategic partnerships um, with very minimal funding to get to where we are. Um, we had to be crafty essentially as a community project, but uh, um, we have a bunch of things that are really interesting, world first things. Um, I'm not actively listening to these sound bites as I'm recording this video, but I'm going to do a reaction reel to the utilities that he promised his holders because they were all complete bullshit and, and our team's been laughing about it since this call. So here's my reaction reel. Among those, uh, we have uh, a world first um, 4K optimized IPFS array, a custom uh, built IPFS array. Um, as far as I know, we are the only entity in the space capable of posting an entire 4K feature film to IPFS um, and have it stream because uh, it is optimized and, and custom made for that. Um, we've been building um, a very, very unique um, marketplace and online streaming platform. Um, the uh, NFTs on our platform will not be able to be right click saved if you um, choose to set it that way. Uh, and we also have uh, streaming terms. Um, that the owners can set. So everyone can decentralize the, the big like Netflix and online streaming sites. Uh, essentially, you could, with your feature film, uh, if you minted it as net as a one of one, uh, you can set the streaming terms and access to it as, as something that's a mockable content. Like the mint is on ETH, um, but we're also going to have access in the marketplace with Matic, with Flow, um, with uh, uh, fiat to debit and credit cards so people can actually stream your content without having to create a wallet, um, which I think is an, a, a very important step for filmmakers in Film 3 um, to be able to invite those audiences. But, uh, um, you know, the uh, there's the gatekeeping is, is like something that I totally vibe with Jordan and like, you know, growing up laying in a place where I didn't have money, like, you know, I didn't come for money, I didn't come from Hollywood and... Uh, I mean, I'm a white guy from the Midwest, and it was still a struggle for me. I mean, I'm a white guy from the Midwest, and it was still a struggle. I mean, I'm a white guy from the Midwest, and it was still a struggle for me. Zeroex Thulu is a community project to do a couple of things. Um, the first wall of gatekeeping is finding funds. Uh, we are uh, like a, essentially apportioning um, 33% of our primary and secondary sales from the relic that's minting right now um, to different sustainable causes. And one of them, we are like starting our own community treasury, which is a nonprofit, uh, where our members can request and propose projects uh, to get grant style funding to create. Um, so. That's sort of the first step, the first wall that a lot of people in the space and, and filmmakers hit where it's very difficult. And that's going to be a decentralized voting process where the, <clears throat> excuse me, membership holders can vote to to get, um, you know, access and approve people and green light people. So it's not just like some central core of elites doing that. I've received points on I don't know how many films and never seen a dime from it. And this is at least trustless. It's so weird to me to hear that he received points on things. When we were first introduced, he didn't know what points were. So I, I don't know what he received points on. I myself have never received points on anything. That's a problem. I've been in the game for 17 years. I haven't received points on it. That's a problem. I don't know what points he received. So like I said, he either lied to me to get involved with Let Me Out Productions, or he's lying to y'all to get you to buy his product. One of those things is illegal. The other one's just disrespectful. It's been a terribly exploited system. It hasn't worked for underrepresented people. It has exploited underrepresented people, and we are all strong enough together to change that. Okay, when I hear that, I get viscerally angry. That is my... Mm, that is what we came into this sector to do. And here he is claiming to uplift marginalized people, claiming to be there for the exploited laborers of the world, exploiting us, putting us in the margins. These people, man, I'm telling you, I am telling you, it's one thing to move that way, but it's a whole nother thing to move that way and then message like you're some sort of savior. Wow. And then you, you have sold your IP. And so I just kind of think that a lot of filmmakers have felt um, uh, I mean, you lose your dignity sort of in begging just to see, to be able to get the money. Here you can create creator-led communities that not only help you in the funding side, but then they amplify it. 
They are your marketing team. They are your they're your audience. They are your champions. They are your partners. Um, so I get super excited about IP and the utility um, that I don't think that you you find in traditional uh, Hollywood certainly, and I don't think that you find in Kickstarter. The uh, NFTs on our platform will not be able to be right click saved. Maybe with Jacob who. It's just doing something super legendary right now, in this moment. It's exploited, underrepresented people. I mean, you lose your dignity if you want to hold on to your IP. By the way, your self-titled architect fully knows the violence that they're implementing on me, a stranger, because they feel entitled to be considered the first mover. I don't care about that. Look at our public facing. I don't care about that. Take it. You, but you didn't need to scrub anybody out. You didn't need to create violence. There was a way to do that that didn't create violence for other people. But y'all only know how to move one way. So here they're saying, oh, you can own your own IP, knowing full and damn well they're helping Jacob Volksky sell stolen IP, and I can prove it. It's in our DMs. Okay? I sent her the NDA 11 days before this room, knowing that this was the drop room for Xerox Tulu. She acknowledges the NDA. But here she is 11 days later. Helping the man sell stolen IP while claiming you can own your own IP. These people are clowns, man. I mean, you lose your dignity with Jacob. Let's take a moment to review what explicitly Jacob is, has stolen and is presenting to the public as his original product. I'm going to read directly from my response to this stupid-ass season to desist that he sent me. He's building off our idea, a professional resource collective of studios, individual creators, creator groups, distributors, and DAOs. I don't care if he thinks he can do it better. It's not his idea to take from me, build off of, and rush to market in any capacity. This is why we sign NDAs. There may be other groups executing similar ideas, like Mogul, who executed a similar idea month after we launched our stuff they have nothing to do with my paper they got nothing to do with my products they're completely independent we don't have an issue with mogul studios congratulations on being pioneers in the sector we celebrate them as first movers but they didn't sign an agreement with me not to build off our plans jacob did he stole our approach building community through creator development focused on marginalized voices that's personally offensive to me that he would claim our mission directly Again, not his idea to take, build off, and rush to market in any capacity. This is why we sign NDAs. There may be other groups using similar approaches, but they didn't sign an agreement with me not to build off ours. And additionally, the self-titled architect also stole that messaging after we brought that messaging into the sector in May and June of 2021. Why? I was born on crack in 1989. I got put in foster care at six months old. I got kicked out the day I turned 18. Not many people like me get a foothold in the entertainment product in any facet, let alone the levels that I've achieved. So that is just the most offensive. He stole our layout. We have a very specific layout that organizes our token holding community against a well-designed voting system and a community treasury. His results may be absolutely harebrained from zero experience there, not having full exposure to our designs, as proven, but once again, not his idea to take, build off, and rush to market at any capacity. This is why we signed NDAs! There may be other groups using similar layouts, but they didn't sign an agreement with me not to build off ours. He also stole our system of interactions. Our very specific layout has very specific interactions in terms of voting, how bounties are paid, and how governance works. Not his idea to take, build off of, and rush to market in any capacity. This is why we sign NDAs. There may be other groups using similar systems, but they didn't sign an agreement with me not to build off ours. And as you've seen now a couple of times, the self-titled architect and the infiltrator fraud directly stole our marketing copy. This is the marketing copy that we went into the sector with. It's because it's heartfelt to me. It's not to be used in any capacity whatsoever. No iteration of professional resource collective. No iteration of uplifting marginalized creators. That's our proprietary marketing copy at Let Me Out Productions. It's in the name, Let Me Out. <laughs> Developed specifically for connecting our platform with consumers. He pulled directly from his experience mining the Let Me Out Productions backend. It's not his idea to take, build off of, and rush to market in any capacity. This is why we sign non-disclosure agreements. This is why we sign them. There may be other groups using similar copy, but they didn't sign an agreement with me. I am so sorry. Um, can you repeat that question? I'm getting blasted with the mid messages. Uh, uh, you were uh, you were asking uh, something about uh, the the royalties. I'm so sorry, Jordan. Oh, it wasn't me. It was Melissa. But uh, <laughs> Melissa, go ahead. 
That's okay. Uh, we were just talking about what you're most excited about as it pertains to film and NFTs in general for the future of uh, how you see the space evolving. Yeah, I mean, uh, what I'm most excited about is the fact that I think what brought me here, what brought most of us here as independent you know, collectors and creators is seeing individuals win. Um, you know, before seeing like a corporation co-opt a, a community, essentially. Um, you know, when I saw individual artists like, oh, wow, I sold my mint for $4 or $4,000 or for, like four ETH, five ETH or something like that. It's exploited underrepresented people. I just want to reiterate how nervous Jacob was because I was in this space the entire time during this entire sales call with the A2 summer session. I was there watching, eating my popcorn, flashing my smiley faces, and this man never spoke without stuttering. I think what brought me here was seeing individuals win. It excites him to see individuals win as long as he specifically is that individual. And, and yeah, going into, you know, what everyone's saying, that decentralizing allows more people to win and allows more people victory. And uh, a lot of the best content has not been shared because of uh, gates and gatekeeping. And uh, I think that right now people have this great sense of freedom in art uh, with what they're posting. Um, there's a lot more visibility to what they're doing. There's a lot more opportunity to tell stories. And then the tech gives us just countless ways that we can build on, on what we used to know. You'll notice this language throughout the call, where Jacob continually frames his actions as decentralized, decentralized. This is what the self-titled architect and the infiltrator fraud discussed at some point in May or June. They felt that I was centralizing my own ideas around the brand Let Me Out Productions. I wrote an open source paper with six open source use cases. All we asked was to attribute the paper, not even Kamani Okira, just say, hey, we got this information from this specific paper, go read it if you wanna launch products on a similar idea. That's what we asked for. They couldn't do that. They needed the marquee. I hope y'all understand how sick this is. That's why they're calling themselves this, the architect, the lead instig, whatever the hell, the instigator of the movement. That's offensive. That's offensive to so many people. I think we're all kind of experimenting with film and Web3 and how it works together that, um, you know, we're all learning and uh, it's just, it, it, that's a really great opportunity for us that I think I'm most excited about that we're all still, you know, <laughs> leading these businesses and coming with these film productions, but we're coming into a place that is far more open and able to, like, gives us the ability to connect with anyone. That is their go-to excuse for theft, plagiarism, and fraud. We're all learning. We're all learning. No, these two people know exactly what they're doing. A lot of people were learning, but these two people know exactly what they're doing. They are moving violently, deliberately. They know exactly and precisely what they're doing. They're like Peter Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. For me, I like to talk a lot about, you know, the utility um, and, the, and, and the value that we as communities can bring. So if someone... Uh, like, for instance, tomorrow decides that they want to pick up uh, a squad member pass and they want to know what the value is. I'm basically, my value is like, I've been doing this 24 7, 18 months, and I think we've, we've proven our value. Um, and there's a lot more to come. We just have to sort of, you know, grease the wheels. And, you know, and it, and it uh, also is a, a ticket to the Film 3 Summit, right? So it's like each community has to decide what that value is. Okay, just so we're clear. That's the self-titled architect's own words that their membership thing does nothing. That's their own words. Not, that's not me saying that. That's them saying that, hey, this does nothing. But I'm entitled to this because I made up a fiction that I've been doing this and I'm the architect and I'm the instigator and all this other bullshit. I'm entitled to your money because I've been, I've been hosting these spaces every once a week. That's actually true. I do honor that, but I don't honor the unethical trial that you held against so many other people conspiracy to limit competition to scoot actual first movers out of the way so you can claim that your July 2021 collaborative brand is the origins of the entire sector which is bullshit because the sector started 24 years ago with Ann Greenberg's uh, grace note technology that was data transactable data points that consumers use in the entertainment product that's what runs Dish Network and DirecTV what's the most funny about their products 
in their own words, doing absolutely nothing. My value is like, I've been doing this 24 seven, 18 months, and I think we've, we've proven our value. We have a deed to the brand of Let Me Out Productions that explicitly states the 15 ways our product fits into the brand. That's public, that's been publicly available for a long time. <laughs> why didn't, why didn't they steal that too? <laughs> Some great ideas in that. You're saying the things that I want you to say, like because the goal for the whole space to advance is to knock out these bad actors and get to the people that really want to be here for the right reasons, right? So I'm sorry if I'm asking tough questions, but you're answering them in the ways that I want you to, so I'm sorry. The person speaking whose initials are MB, I'm not going to claim as a part of this, but they did remove me from stage immediately after I said my piece later in this call. And that was just, I wasn't confrontational. I just made a really good point that offended them. So they removed me from stage. So this MB person might have been involved in the little cabal of uh, people that knew better, but uh, here they are saying that uh, they're here to knock out the bad actors while platforming the baddest actors in the entire sector. So you all see that they move one way, they message the opposite, and they, they confuse and defraud you. That's what they're doing. I'm pretty much the instigator behind the, the Film 3 movement and the chief architect behind that. And, and uh, you know, the squad's the foundation of Film 3. So I, uh, I left that job. Um, I had started building Zero X Thulu, and uh, it is a, a grassroots community project. Part of their little collusion back in May and June of 2021 was deciding that our language of company ownership token was non-compliant. All right, meanwhile, my colleagues in professional basketball agree that ownership is the best product to offer consumers, collaborative ownership. I don't know. We, we, it's only us with, you know, with experience in one of the largest entertainment products in the world. Meanwhile, these two assholes collude and decide, oh, no, it can't be ownership, it's got to be membership. That's why they're dropping their membership products one day after the other. Come on now, use your brain. These people colluded, and this was, this was Jacob's reward for taking us out, because I believe the idea came from the self-titled architect, based on the actions from day one. And Jacob switched tone in, in the beginning of June. Uh, I thought it was because I told him to reel it back and stop calling himself a partner at Let Me Out Productions, because I barely knew the guy. I, I have to apologize, because my phone has just been absolutely exploding, and I'm, I don't mean to be, like, uh, apart from, from this, but I totally missed the question yet again, because uh, uh, we're through our mint. <laughs> I want to point out again, it's the second time he's not paying attention to the call. Why? He's actively washing his product. He's too busy buying and buying his own product to pay attention to what's going on on the call. Y'all, if you believe that a bot hacked his smart contract and bought half of the supply and removed that supply from the market, one, that is exactly why you use a third-party marketplace contract to define your properties for consumer safety. And two, uh, that's not true. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now, y'all gonna believe that? You know who's not gonna believe that? It's three letters. F. T. C. Federal Trade Commission. The Consumer Protection Bureau in the Federal Trade Commission. Listen, I know I've challenged the thinking of these folks, but this man is actively committing a crime. What, what um, advice would you give to anyone that is interested in the film space? And uh, what resources would you point them to? Uh, or what general advice overall would you give someone in, that would like to get into the space? Yeah, so, uh, um, you know, a new person, just looking at, uh, uh, and now I recall too, you were talking specifically too about documentaries and all of that. Um, I would say a lot of people, you should just pick up a camera and start messing around if you've never created before. Um, you know, just start learning a little bit, start experimenting a lot, and uh, um, start drafting out your ideas. And uh, usually, um, you know, one of the best resources I found, um, there was a, a great book, and I, I, the name slips my mind, but uh, if you research um, like a TV series pitch Bible and, and feature film pitches, um, you know, concepts, proof of concept kind of things, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting blown up with so many messages right now. Um, 
if you, if you start with that and that that sort of infrastructure for how you're going to lay out a documentary and how you're going to lay out your plan, uh, you start filling in things like locations, people, characters, uh, settings, uh, you know, the tone and all of that, um, you know, just start collecting and just start brainstorming. Um, so I think that that would be like a very, very good, very beneficial thing for new people coming into the space. Um, and also just uh, find a community, find people who are making films or have made films. I think most people are very warm to uh, um, anyone who's looking to learn. Um, if you're looking to get into film traditionally and all of that, um, find someone who works there and ask if there's a way for you to start in like an entry level spot or, or just to shadow them around. Uh, sometimes you have that opportunity, sometimes not because of safety. Um, but uh, yeah, get to know people. If you want to listen to advice from a fraudulent amateur, listen to this advice. If you want to be a fraudulent amateur, listen to that advice. It's good, am it's good advice for a fraudulent amateur. There he is again, telling on himself. That's exactly what he did to enter Web3, except you ain't shadow me, dude. You signed a non-disclosure agreement. That's why I thought you were committed to our success here at Let Me Out Production. That's why I thought you wanted to be a part of our, our collective. I think what brought me here was seeing individuals win. But you didn't want to be a part of our collective. You wanted to kill our collective and go start your own collective and pretend you had nothing to do with us. You know who knew that? The self-titled architect. They knew everything. They knew it. Don't listen to them lie. Again. Saying, oh, I didn't know that happened. Yes, you did. That's why you're helping them right now. Y'all planned this. Y'all planned this. Don't tell me otherwise. The really cool thing about this Web3, Film3 is, is truly the generosity and the kindness. But of course, there are bad players, as, as always. And I think that we have to have each other's back. I'm very much about protecting uh, the future of film as we're trying to build it here in a, in a better place for underrepresented and marginalized communities and people who have been gatekept. There are bad players. <laughs> there are bad players. You're the bad players. You're the bad players. You're in the way of everybody succeeding. And we had, a, we had what, a, a, a gatekeeping call the other day, right? And y'all was like, oh, the tech is the gatekeeper. No. Everybody understands that the blockchain is a public notary service that organizes the entries to the notary in blocks, notarizes the block, and keeps those blocks in an encrypted chain. It's a network of a hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands of notaries keeping that chain of blocks as a record. It's unhackable because you'd have to hack all of the notaries at the same time to change a record. It's impossible. Everybody knows that. And everybody knows those data points are programmable. You can build blockchain operating systems on them. You can program smart treasuries to, to read equity and properties. Everybody knows this. The tech is not the problem. It is the behavior. Uh, Jason Charnick does a lot of stuff. He's got, you know, almost 30 years in this business in post-production. We have Film Frico and, and Gino that do uh, a beautiful bilingual room on Fridays. Um, and again, we have Monday room and, and the OG room with me, which is the original room on Wednesdays. But I think that, you know, finding the communities and the right communities, the right communities, the right communities, I'd uh, like to shout out uh, a few of them. Miguel Faust is going into production for his feature film. Oh, congratulations to all you people. Some of you knew better that floated this person's pool noodle, okay? Because here she is reading off a list of all the people that floated her pool noodle. Meanwhile, part of the reason that she's doing this list is to scrub out all of the other first movers that did not float her pool noodle, okay? So a couple of them here. Deadheads, I see you. Stoner Cats, I see you. Antara, Camels, I see you. Beam.xyz, oh, I see you. Oof, it's offensive that they would cut you out. Flinch Community, I see you. Dragonforge, I see you. Okay, Never Alone Experience, I see you. Uh, Movie Studio Dow, I see you. Lauren Walsh's Dow, I forget the name of it, but I see you, okay? Z Creative Media, I see you. Henry CM, who hasn't shown up since, they, since he got scrubbed out, I see you. There's others. And congratulations to everybody she said, too. I got problems with nobody except for these two individuals. I didn't even have problems with the people who knowingly helped them. All right? Y'all didn't choose to put violence into my life. These fuckers did. These fuckers did. And people died. People died in my life after they decided to scrub us out of, our, our, out of the economy that we should have been at least a part of. 
okay? But they had to make up rules against our existing model and existing products. And I remind everybody, in May of 2021, my paper was the only published resource on this sector. The only one. We weren't the only products because I believe Mogul Studios had their products up and there were products that might have existed back in time at Paus.tv. Y'all should check them out. They're pioneers. Go all the way back to 2018. Like we say, we keep on telling everybody, there is no architect. Y'all scrubbing out so many people that came earlier to platform this liar. You know, Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. You know good and damn well. We publish our paper in March. You know good and damn well we launch a company ownership token collection in March. You know good and damn well we launched a Crypto Bears musical in March. We sold the first bear on March 28th. I'm Kraft Mine. The history that's mine. You know Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. <laughs> Kamani did the tokenomics thing last June? How are you going to say you're a champion of blockchain and you're lying against the blockchain in real time? That, that's it. That's it. What are you doing? What are you doing? And then, and then right next to Jacob, who, who signed a non-disclosure agreement on May 8th, but come on, he did the tokenomics thing last June. You, you know what we got to do with that? Because it's kind of a bop, right? Come on, he did the tokenomics thing last June. Ooh, I got an idea. You know, Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. By the way, there's zero reason to lie about that. There's, that does nothing for anybody. It's literally just violence against myself and my team. That's all that that is. And I've been told that they repeated that over 60 times in their spaces. Yeah, we've had spies in your shit the entire time. Okay, stop it. You repeated that over 60 times in public messaging throughout two years. Where's the justice? Kamani did the tokenomics thing last June. 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 I'm your host, Kamani Okira, and I am done with this shit. Let me do a brief insert here just to highlight the depth of this person's entitlement, the depth of the self-titled architect's entitlement. We have a colleague filmmaker here in Sacramento. His name is Jeff Fong, and he founded a studio called The Film Squad in 2013. So for 10 years, he's been doing business under the mark of trade, The Film Squad. Anybody who did an ounce of market research would figure this out because their website is thefilmsquad.com. What makes these people think that they can take from Jeff Fong his 10-year mark of trade? Okay, just do a thought exercise with me. You can't call your studio Home Box 3 Office. You can't call your studio National Broadcasting 3 Corporation. Okay? You can't call your studio The Film 3 Squad. This is ridiculous. It's entitlement right out in the open. No one knows what the fuck they're doing here. And I feel like every, everyone is sort of swimming together, just, just tra trying to find land and then like really build that out in like the most mutually beneficial way possible so yeah i think like again like jacob also said like i think actually hopping in being around and involved in communities like sh like making making it apparent that you're actually here to stay not not here to really sort of extract and leave now this other uh, host of the call well his initials are ds you don't catch a few strays here because i honestly don't think he was involved in any of this whereas mb i have my questions about but DS was clearly not involved in any of this. But uh, he says, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing here. Which was the original kneecap. That was the original kneecap when I first presented this information back in May of 2021. Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows what the fuck they're doing here. And he says, everyone is sort of swimming, trying to find land. Make it apparent that you're here to stay, not to extract value and leave. <laughs> hi, hi, Jacob. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> yeah. Did you make it apparent that you're here to stay, not extract value and leave? Because I believe you owe your uh, you owe your collectors about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what I believe. Did you make it apparent that you're here to stay, not extract value and leave? Dan, the man said it right there. Did you make it apparent? Y'all ready for one of the best parts? If y'all think I was just gonna sit in the crowd and not pop up and say something, now here at our culture, Let Me Out Productions, we actually don't believe in confrontation because. It creates a bad energy for everybody. 
we believe in working things out for sure. We don't believe in confrontation. So here I am. Wait, wait, I'll just, just experience it with me. Does anybody else have advice for new people getting into this space or like to speak? Yeah, just mint everything to the blockchain. It's a very useful proof of origin utility. And um, it can become very effective in moments where, you know, uh, intellectual property is being infringed upon or, uh, you know, people are ripping your trade secrets. It's very useful to mint these things to the blockchain so you have proof of origin down to the millisecond. See, that silence though are you serious that was dead silence <laughs> what did I say what did I say what did I say that was so offensive and that's also why I believe MB was in on this because I was removed from stage immediately after I said that but what did I say that was so offensive to these people I, I made a good point about a use case for blockchain that's all I did <laughs> Can we count the seconds of silence after I finish the statement? Oh, <laughs> that is syrup, baby. That is maple syrup on a pancake right there. Ooh, let's count them up. So you have proof of origin down to the millisecond. Nice. <laughs> All right, Dan, I know you caught strays a, a few seconds back. But here's proof that Dan was not involved because he broke the unspoken rule in film three. All right. If Kamani pops up on stage, you immediately remove him. And then behind the scenes and in every private conversation, you discredit his labor and act like he's a pariah. I hate talking about myself in the third person. Oh, he hates talking about himself in the third person. But let's prove Dan wasn't in on it. And then uh, there's people that do this. Every time I go into a, a film three space, I pop up, I say something, I'm immediately removed. Shira Lazar from Time Magazine did that. So Time, you got somebody in your own house that you need to check. Because I'm not playing around with these motherfuckers. I'm not playing around with you, with you clowns. This is all a conspiracy to limit competition, and that is illegal. So Shira Lazar, why'd you remove me from that space the other, uh, the other day, huh? I was the only person removed from stage. Come on, sorry, Kamani, to your point, too, there, there's also, you know, there's some artists who are doing really, really great anti-corruption work also that I'm working with in the doc, uh, and, who, who, and who are also working in places with authoritarian governments, you know, and I think that, like, using sort of this universal timestamp is also something that I'm talking about in the film. It's kind of a fascinating concept. Um, and, you know, like, there's one artist in particular who is, like, literally creating work uh, in a reflect in reflection of what's going on in like his war torn country as a means of like making sure that these events are recorded on chain, you know, and like that, that there is like this universal time signature for that moment and that experience, that emotion captured from art. And I think that there's there's something wonderfully poetic to that, right? Like sort of this this objective layer of truth uh, being created by like this universal time signature. So thank you for for sharing. Now Jacob's gone, right? He left after I spoke up. He took off. He knows if, ooh. See, what these fuckers didn't understand, they didn't understand I was James Earl Jones' grandnephew, which shouldn't be a big deal to anybody. It doesn't make me any more important than your toenail, okay? It doesn't. It truly doesn't. In the back end of Hollywood, it's a market position, and that means I get my emails responded to half the time. I probably get more emails responded to than you because people know that that's the affiliation. It doesn't mean I can do anything for anybody, and it certainly doesn't mean I was a Nepo baby. I found that out I was 19 years old a year after I got kicked out of foster care. What's no statistic about that? I'm not well resourced because I'm James Earl Jones' grandnephew. The one thing, the one leg up is after I let the agents in the family know this was going on, they've had my back since I let them know. And that's a resource, and I thank them for that. We have a correspondent at the edge of the earth. And uh, so let's just check in with him and see if in fact the globe is a sphere or if there is a wall to be protected. It's not the wall, it's not the stars, it's the Dothrakis. <laughs> it is known that the earth is flat. Oh, so what's behind you? The behind me, there is a wall of ice that goes up to space. <laughs> Why is if you're in Dothraki and you're in a Dothraki field? I'm near the Dothraki Sea. 
Oh, oh, is that right? Okay. Yes. Are, are you a call? My name is Kalmani. But Jacob took off. You see, he ain't he ain't here. It's his own his own drop. He left his own drop. Yeah, I mean, Dan. you know, like it's like the the space. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, Dan. It's it's me. It's Jordan over here, quietly thinking. I'd love to jump in on this, especially because yeah, you've yeah, been yeah. fielding so many of them. Hey, Dave. Um, Hello. So hey. Um, so I've spotlighted hundreds of projects at this point, Julie being one of them, and Julie's a, a good friend. And um, so there's a couple of things I really think you should, that we all have to think about, is that um, Julie minted out last January when we were in a bull market. That's one. When people were picking up JPEGs and she came in, you know, with a little bit of clout underneath her and a lot of, uh, you know, beautiful photography and and as a you know a feature film, she had she had a lot of support. Ooh, ooh, was it, is that some neg that I smell right there? Is that some spoiled neg? Not the self-titled architect discrediting Julie's mint out by declaring it conditional on the bull market and clout based. Not that. Not discrediting of your own team member. Ooh, ooh, what is that? Ooh, ow. I don't think friends say stuff like that. Ooh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that about my friends. I have friends in the exact same position as Julie Pacino, with with similar relations. I have friends that are sons and daughters of the uh, of the of other actors in The Godfather. I would never say that about their success. Ooh, only because it was a it was a bull market and it's cloud based. She had she had a lot of support. And I mean, what I mean by that is community. Um, so one of the things that I say often, especially like, again, I watch Miguel Faust, who's not actually minted out, even though he's going into production, as you try to figure out what your NFT strategy, because it will be unique to you, will be. This little nugget right here, I just want to clarify, okay? They say your NFT strategy will be unique to you. No. There's one strategy here. It's a scalable intellectual property puzzle. That's how, that's it. And this distracting, meandering bullshit for two years has led everybody to believe that they can all launch their own models. None of them are scalable. None of them are industry-friendly products. What we're here to do is establish a proof-of-labor system in films and in seasons of television that establishes net profit distribution to every laborer that worked on the film or that season of television. Our number at Let Me Have Productions is 20%. Why do y'all think you're getting blocked by strike leaders across the industry? It ain't because I'm a big deal. Who do you think I sent my paper to throughout 2021? Agencies and unions. Their introduction to the technology was through the paradigm that we established. Can I just jump in here, Dan, just because I, I have to leave in a few minutes. Um, Babel, it's great to see you again. Um, you can always jump in, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really about showing up every day. I'm really about building. I'm really about being additive and bringing value. I'm pretty much the instigator behind the, the Film 3 movement and the chief architect behind that. And, and uh, you know, the squad's the foundation of Film 3. Um, as you see, my PFP uh, was given to me the other day by the guys from Virtue Animation, in fact, um, because they called me the builder. And, and I, I was really humbled by that and, and, and also felt like, wow, they, they, they get me. <laughs> they really see me. I think that that's what you do. I think that's what a leader does. You show up every day and, um, and you, you lead by example. This little thing right here that the self-titled architect said, show up every day and add value, that specifically targeted me and my team. April 10th of 2021, my brother Kiovani Lyles dies. He's homeless. Navy veteran, homeless in a tent. Dies in that tent. Didn't tell anybody he was down bad. I knew something was up because he hadn't responded on messaging to any, any of my messages on any channels for months and months and months. I knew something was up. His friend told me he was, last time he saw him was in Alameda in like November. So my plan was to get my car fixed and comb the streets of the bay until I found him. Y'all got in the way of that. 
not, not y'all specifically, but the uh, the basketball team here in Sacramento, which denied me my paycheck, which introduced me to the first concept of conspiracy limit competition, they they specifically and exactly got in the way of that. The same team that goes around saying Black Lives Matter. I'm really about showing up every day. I'm really about building. I'm really about being additive and bringing value. Show up every day and add value. My brother died April 10th. I find out on May 12th. It was devastating. We had our pilot dude, a meta person, three days after. We had personnel issues with three members of our team that were not, that were just taking control over our project from the inside. That's not including Jacob Folksky, who I just added to the team in early May to account for some of those personnel issues. That's why he was added to begin with. Michael Glenn died in that March. My Auntie Sylvia died in June of 2021. So when our drop was sabotage, and I finally realized that that fraud Volksky was on up to an op, I took a break. I couldn't keep doing this. I couldn't keep coming into here, facing the violence of these assholes. One's holding my shit on trial. The other one's sabotaging us from the inside and trying to steal the farm. Meanwhile, we lost three family members to poverty. One, well, one's to brain cancer, one's to throat cancer, the other one died homeless in a tent. But come on now. I'm really about showing up every day. Show up every day and add value. My birth mother, Kim, died in September 2021. My granny, Barbara, James Earl Jones' direct cousin, died in October 2021. My uncle, Robert Earl Jackson, named after Robert Earl Jones, James' dad, he died in November 2021. My uncle, Melvin, died in April 2022. There's some chance that without this dirty market bullshit, we could have had a strong mint on our July 3rd drop or any of the previous sales calls before that. And there's some chance that one or all four of those lives might have been positively affected and might still be here today. I don't even like thinking about that because had we, had we sold out or had we even sold 1% of the show, for example, we did one-tenth of potential on our drop day and then they still died, that would feel worse than it feels right now. Now, Jacob Volsky is just a fraud. He's a thief, an infiltrator, a clown, and a fraud. And there's no fixing that. If you hire him to work on your shit, be that on your own head. Okay? The self-titled architect took what should have been an authentic presentation and twisted it and bended it and misused her platform. I'm pretty much the instigator behind the, the Film 3 movement and the chief architect behind that. And, and uh, you know, the squad's the foundation of Film 3. She didn't need to do that. Nobody would have had a problem with, hey, I started, I started my journey in Clubhouse in February 2021. I learned about how blockchain synthesized with film production, and I created a space that was a beacon to onboard people into the sector. We ran into an, a person with an idea for a collaborative storytelling brand in late May. We, he, he published an open source paper. Now, we, did, we weren't comfortable with the language of ownership, so we decided to offer membership and build a studio a collaborative brand around membership, and we launched that in July. I wouldn't have had a problem with that. That's perfect. Had that been the truth and had that been the authentic journey, I wouldn't be up here making a video about the self-titled architect. I wouldn't even really have a problem with the language of architect and instigator and all that shit. I mean, it is offensive to Anne Greenberg of Grace Notes, it's offensive to Maria Tanyala and Irina Albita of Film Chain, it's offensive to Rishi Kapoor of Paus.tv, it's, it's, it's offensive to the entire library team, it's offensive to Bill Ottman with Minds.com. There are plenty of pioneers that paved the way for us to be here, whether you know of them or not. And for somebody to sit there and say that they're the architect of 20 years of labor that came previous to them that they're not affiliated with, I'm just a drop in that bucket. I'm still in that bucket, though. For them to claim the, that they're the architect of that is horrible. And for all y'all to float that pool noodle, trying to get away with your own win off that pool noodle, stop it. You're embarrassing yourself. Now, Jacob is just an infiltrator fraud. He's clout-soaked, as you saw by that Kiefer Sutherland message. And that clout-soakedness got him in an awful position in our industry. Because this idiot put Keith David and the beloved performer Keith David, esteemed actor Keith David, all over his data points, all over his NFTs. And now we got to get the whole supply to burn him, and then even then the metadata? Come on now. Don't do that, for the record. If you're producing works with, with blockchain data points, these things are permanent. Okay? Do not put your performers' names on them. Don't put their images on them unless you specifically license that. 
This guy's so clout-soaked, he couldn't even respect a legend in our industry, Keith David. It's a family friend of ours. Okay? Now you got the entirety of Baldwin Hills mad at you. They know your name. What a clown. And y'all bet on this. And look, even with the unauthorized trial, even with the bullshit that the self-titled architect put us through, I tried to warn them. Do not affiliate with this person. Do not affiliate with this fraud, Jacob Volsky. I sent them the non-disclosure agreement 11 days before this drop run. They acknowledge it, and here they are on stage selling his stolen IP right alongside him. Okay? Now, JF, you've told me that they didn't know. They didn't know. They got so many things going on, they couldn't keep... That's an excuse, dude. Don't believe that shit. These people colluded on this outcome. And these people are in the way of your success and of my success. They're in the way of mass adoption of this technology, and they're in the way of 20% net profit to labor in a film or a season of television. Um, you do the best you can, you're human, and you start to build a community. And again, I, I bring it always back to community because they're, we're all unique in here. Um, I mean, I see so many amazing people that I know and have seen grow in this, in this ecosystem over the last two years. The product is a scalable intellectual property puzzle. There's a collaborative consumer product when 10 to 16% of the pieces, 10% in a film or a season of television, 16% in a brand. That's the product. 90% of the puzzle is a proof of labor system in a, uh, in a film or a season, and 84% is a proof of labor system in a brand. You don't have to use as exact explicit numbers, but use that paradigm. Your proof of labor system is exactly what it says, accounts for labor, and is the distribution method of sharing success. The collaborative consumer product green lights your works, protects your intellectual property from uh, being sold at the franchise level, and you can maximize your storytelling capabilities. Then you sell distribution rights to the completed product. The product is not community. That's a platitude. Now there is no architect of this sector. We are transacting data points to interact with consumers. The first person to do this was Ann Greenberg with Grace Note back in 1999. Grace Note was a data point technology where you as a consumer would call on a data point to change the channel on Dish Network or, or DirecTV. It's exactly what we do on blockchain except for that wasn't on blockchain. But Ann pulled that out of the abstract depth of thought. Okay, think about that. Because before, we used those scrolling cable menus. We had to wait 20 minutes to find out what everything that was on. And now we actually have a menu that we can scroll through, select a data point, and that gives us access to the content in real time. And Greenberg. Okay, 1999, Grace Note Technologies. Is it Grace Note Technologies or Grace Note LTD? I don't know. And Greenberg all the way back in 1999, who from the abstract depth of thought, said was looking at a cable TV menu say what if, what if we could click on those and that would bring us to the channel why don't those tie to a data point that, um, that that provides content access or channel access and then she built that that's the first product in this sector 1999 okay that's how direct TV and dish network ran go to 2014 arena Albita and Maria Tanyala with film chain out in Europe with a residual distribution on blockchain. In 2015, you have Minds.com and Library slash Odyssey. These are video on demand platforms. Minds is more social media, but it was one of the first social media platforms to issue a financial reward for uploading your video content. There's Paus.tv or Paus.tv. I say Paus because that's how they spelled it. P A U S.tv. Okay? They started in 2020. That's a marketplace specifically for films and, and episodes and things like that. We can go to that marketplace and purchase films and, and episodes off the chain. All right, these are pioneers. And you got this person calling themselves the architect. Those are not the only people they're scrubbing out. I also forgot to shout out Hidden Ones, okay, The Slender Dow, Poor Marty, Black Dave, Low Sleazy, Natalie Crew, 
Latasha. Why did I not say Latasha? Latasha is like a fundamental pioneer in this space. What's wrong with me? Ugh. And you know what? I there's there's other people that I know I'm forgetting, and if I'm forgetting you, I'm sorry. All right, but uh, y'all. Now Hollywood understood that this person was full of crap. The minute they ha head up on a con film festival stage, they were asked what the product that Film Three is presenting to the industry, and they said the product is Film Three. The product is community, and you heard it all throughout this call. There isn't an actual product there. There isn't an actual product. This person has just tried to social engineer their way, their name into the marquee. And like, you didn't need to do that. You could just be authentic. Hey, that's, I was one of the first people here. And I had an organic journey that brought me to my own collaborative storytelling brand in July of 2021. After that paradigm was introduced to us. But no, you're out here trying to plagiarize and say that that paradigm originated with you, but you don't even know the vision. So you can't even teach it to people. You just keep on saying community over and over and over again. It's a joke. I personally don't think it's appropriate for me to talk about what my products and what the Elmo products do uh, on this specific context. But I will say I will have an updated deed for y'all put on the blockchain later. And you'll be able to read this whole thing. How are the intellectual properties defined? What the rights are in the intellectual property when you become a part owner. There's 15 different ways the puzzle piece fits into the brand puzzle. Okay? This is what you need. This is 35 pages. This is what you need when you are launching a professional resource collective using our model. You have to have a deed to present a value assured product to consumers. They need to understand what the property is that they are purchasing. Okay? It's that simple. So I'll publish this. I'll publish an update to this. But y'all really need to uh, soul search and figure out a way to move forward. So here's the deal. Everybody knows that this happened and the back end of Hollywood. I'm not a big deal. Okay, my biggest credit is either the NBA, The Bachelor, or that Showtime documentary I did with Tom Brady's company. It's not, I'm not a big deal. My granduncle's a big deal, but I, I don't ride on his coattails, and nobody in Hollywood should ride on celebrities' coattails into a position. I've never done that in my career. It was January of 2022 that I started bringing that up. And I, had to, I wrote an email to his agent and to, his, and to my other granduncle, Matthew, and his agent, and I let him know, hey, Granny Barbara died, and at my birth mom's funeral a month before she died, I was explaining to her all this BS. And she told me, use everything you got. Use everything you got. Bring up my cousin. Start talking about where you come from. So after she passed, it took me another three months to even be remotely comfortable with that. And it's my plot armor. Part of that plot armor is if this somehow took off and this was now the public face of this sector and these big companies, uh, the big studios built off of this and then it got found out down the line that one of James Earl Jones' grandnephews was plagiarized and ripped off and buried... There'd be a lot of angry Star Wars fans. And I don't, I'm, I'm a casual. I don't deserve that sort of support. But there'd be a lot of angry Star Wars fans that uh, you spit in the blood, okay? I would also bet that there'd be a lot of angry NBA fans, too. I spent 10 years in that entertainment product. And that's a tight-knit family. That's a tight-knit group. We go at each other all the time. But pro basketball is tight-knit. That's why Big Three... They call their they call their owner they call their tokens ownership too, baby. That's what that's what that's what consumers want. They want ownership, the collaborative property, and that's what the product is. If you come from those backgrounds, Star Wars fan, NBA fan, do not harass these people. Do not. That is not the outcome. That is not progressive. If you want to buy our products, that's fine. But that, do not harass these people. To the sector, y'all have treated me like I'm a pariah, like I'm some dirty bomb that's trying to get rid of this woman who, who is somehow this magical source of everything. No, this is social engineering. It's conspiracy to limit competition. It's horizontal collusion. It's plagiarism. And it's consumer fraud. Three of those four are crimes. Okay? They're crimes. They're antitrust violation. If we can't hold our own community to account... 
we do need regulators in here. We do need adults in the room. And I'll have no problem cooperating with whatever they tell us to do because y'all behaviors have been sick. Like I said, we got spies. We got people that tell us what's going on. Y'all treat me like I'm out here sewing narratives to sell products, sewing narratives to scrub other people out. That happened to us. That happened to us. If we can't speak up on what happened to us, what sort of culture are you setting? Because the culture that y'all set so far is to enslave. Open source labor, you enslave it. Okay? Y'all know who you are. Using our use cases without attribution. I know who you are too, because I gave a lot of y'all one-on-one -on -one consults on this stuff. Okay? I'm not going to sell out your projects or right here, because I don't want anybody to get harassed. Wag me, right? Wag me. <sighs> y'all will wag me fraud right front and center and try to present that to the industry. Wow. All right. I hope y'all learned something. By the way, I've spent a few minutes there thinking that this was all some sort of op because, you know, I was born on crack and I got trafficked out a few six months old. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and shout out to my Foster Foundation family. Not, every time I say that, don't take it personal. All right? I love y'all. Um, but I, was, I, I spent a good minute thinking these people were ops. And then your self-titled architect changed the name from NFT Film Squad to the Film 3 Squad, which is directly infringing on Jeff Fong's trademark. Jeff Fong is an Asian-American filmmaker out here in Sacramento, California, who has been running the Film Squad studio since 2013. So it's proof of entitlement, because they've known that for a while now. I pointed that out a long time ago. It's proof of entitlement. I don't, I don't think they're a government op, because that's, that's pretty stupid. That, like, that's, that's real stupid. Okay. And uh, you're all out here trying to bully this man out of his trademark with fiction? Get the fuck out. One of the biggest mistakes these fools made was thinking I was alone. Because I don't exploit people. I don't try to get a community to show up and work for free. I try to get the funding in place so everybody's paid in a dignified position for the labor that they're providing. These folks decided that exploiting community was the way to go. You've heard it throughout this entire presentation. So that's one of the biggest mistakes they made was thinking I was alone. So I'm putting my entire family in this reel here. I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. You mean the world to me. And the reason that I kept going through this BS, because it's been two and a half years of, let's be real, y'all hate blockchain, right? Y'all hate NFTs, because some influencer told you to hate them, and that's left me on an island against these people's violence. And that needs to change. I also want to be clear that neither the self-titled architect nor that infiltrator fraud, Volksky, had any right to do what they did. These are crimes, specifically Volksky. Okay? The self-titled architect is bending truths and, and doing this narrative crafting as social engineering, but Volksky specifically committed crimes. He stole from me, he stole from our team, and he violated terms to not do specifically what he did. So, to clarify any market confusion presented by these unethical movers, all information, strategies, and use cases established by the Elmo Structure for Tokenomics are born from the abstract depth of thought of myself, synthesized with personal and family experiences in film and television production, anchored by a paradigm that celebrates the dignity, agency, and sovereignty of marginalized people. Please disregard any other groups or individuals who have claimed authority over this information in any way, shape, form, or facet. We do not endorse any representations of this information unless they come from a certified Let Me Out team member. You can become one, you just have to grab a piece of the branding and learn the model from the inside. Okay? Your paper was originally published on March 22nd, but I claim March 24th in the paper because that's what's on the blockchain. Uh, the work is available for use, enjoyment, discussion, and repurposing under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. We do not endorse any use, employment, discussion, or repurposing without attribution, which is what's happened. We do not endorse any representations of the use case established by this paper unless they come from an LMO team member certified to represent the information, which is also what's happened. So let's clean this market up. I hope you all learned something. I wouldn't have made it through all of this nonsense because there have been some dark thoughts and dark chapters to this last two and a half years. I wouldn't have made it throughout all this nonsense without the angels that have supported me through this. First of all, 
our co-founders, Aaron and Nick, they are the cement that got us through to today. They are the cement. All of the angels that fought through their scorn for NFTs and blockchain and supported the business, y'all mean the world to me, our early adopter community. We have over 240 people strong in our collective so far. Ooh, that's a blessing. Put them all in a room. We can't handle it. We're at maximum occupancy, baby. And it's only growing bigger. So I'm going to make one final point and we'll wrap up this whole doc. There have been some severe mental health implications to this experience. For example, I have a traumatic stress disorder now when it comes to trusting strangers with anything. When it comes to putting my ideas out in public, I have a stress disorder. You know how wrong that is? I'm a cognitive linguist. I need to be able to share my ideas without somebody else putting their name on them. But here we are. After two and a half years of this, these folks put their name on my stuff. They transacted business with my stuff without attribution. And they bastardized that stuff as well. And in doing so, they set us back tremendously. An incredible amount of violence in my life. I literally am staying in a storage unit right now. Okay? <laughs> you think I want to be here? It's a blessing. Don't get me wrong. Because I've, I've, I have slept in a car before. My brother died in a tent. But this is not where I should be. The first wall of gatekeeping is exploited underrepresented people. You know, Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. I'm pretty much the instigator behind the, the Film 3 movement and the chief architect behind that. And, and uh, you know, the squad's the foundation of Film 3. So I think we're all kind of experimenting with film and Web 3 and how it works together. For me, I like to talk a lot about, you know, the utility. Just community. Cloud community. Community. Yeah. Community because I'm pretty much the instigator behind the, the Film 3 movement and the chief architect behind that. And... And, uh, you know, the squad's the foundation of Film 3. You know, Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. You know, Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. Decentralizing allows more people to win and allows more people victory. And uh, a lot of the best content has not been shared because of uh, gates and gatekeeping. Seeing individuals win. I'm pretty much the instigator behind the, the Film 3 movement and the chief architect behind that. And... And, uh, you know, the squad's the foundation of Film 3. You know, Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. I've received points on I don't know how many films and never seen a dime from it. I, I left that job um, and started building Zero X Thulu. It's been a terribly exploitive system. It hasn't worked for underrepresented people. You know, Kamani down there did the tokenomics thing last June. Yeah, just mint everything to the blockchain. It's a very useful proof-of-origin utility. And... Um, it can become very effective in moments where, you know, uh, intellectual property is being infringed upon or, uh, you know, people are ripping your trade secrets. It's very useful to mint these things to the blockchain so you have proof of origin down to the millisecond. That there is like this universal time signature. And be blessed. I'm glad you exist.